What it do, what it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Peace Dealer, and welcome to your full moon in Capricorn webinar. The moon is at the final degrees of Capricorn right now, and as we are broadcasting this live, and what's exceptional about this is that what we're manifesting is the greatness of this sincerity. Shout out to those of you in the live chat. Thank you, Jaiwan, for bringing your Reiki. And the Pratt Pack, this little community is the best. That's the whole point of astrology. I'm so glad you pointed that out. Right now, we're building an 11th house. Everyone in the live chat right now is taking advantage of their connective abilities to commune and share what? Ideas, thoughts, who we are. And shout out to everyone here. I saw Chad Taylor really pumped to heal the world amongst another few. So you know what I'm saying? Um, really take that for what you will. We are all throughout the course of this webinar going to fine tune our intent and we're going to direct it. You know, Capricorn is all about direction. We're going to direct it towards the world. All right. And um, when we do the healing session, after I go over a summary of this full moon, you galactics don't don't be don't be putting it towards the universe. I'm so serious with this because these are we're, we're, we're fighting dark forces that are keeping the vibration low in the first place. Some of you get a little bit over ego. Leo, I'm talking to you. Pisces, I'm talking to you. Um, Aquarius, you think you know more because you actually, it's because you know more that you think that you don't have to really just do exactly. Some of you, if you direct this energy healing to the universe, it's going to key in the galactic dark forces and we could actually get more interference. So this is a little bit covert in uh, our intention. Regardless, let me not make too much fanfare or hype this up too much. I'm very amazed. A lot of people, um, well, let me not be too generalized, but I've noticed a few people talk about how they feel ready to take on so much. And what we've done the first couple of weeks was build up the power necessary in order to move into this new karmic chapter. Because ever since March of this year in Pisces season, we've been walking through a very powerful portal. We walked out the Pisces eclipse and we're going into a Leo eclipse. A segue from Pisces to Leo is like Disneyland. This is where your inner Walt Disney is about to come out and create a world for your heart. But before we do so, in the chat, getting major interference already. So one thing to know that I haven't specified and I'll have to say in a couple more live videos, when you experience interference, know that for other people in the live chat, they're actually getting a, a live feed. So some people are gonna get interfered individually more than others and it really has a lot to do with how important it is for you not to get this message by negative entities. And know that the more you get interfered, the more powerful you are. Don't let that discourage you. Just let that let you know that this battle is happening right now. Okay. Anyway. What's a redeeming feature of this full moon in Capricorn? Every time we release, you don't want to fall into the trap of feeling like get things sparked an initiative. The sparking happened this cancer season that ushered in the change of the seasons into the summer solstice. And your emotional sincerity has now reached its peak. As this moon slips into Aquarius, and taps you into the omniscience of K2, all right, at master degrees over the next couple of days, you're going to be downloading supreme knowledge that's going to transform 
how deeply you feel into all this energy. If anything, what's even more uh, beautiful, shout out to Brianna Thomas in the chat. Thank you for joining us. Um, what's even more beautiful right now is that there is just such an immense and amazing buildup of your chakra that you have not been aware of because the sun has been trining Neptune and Pisces. So what this next two week transit is gonna be for you is as you release and let go, you know, we build up these first two weeks, as you release and you let go, you're going to be building your power, especially once the moon hits Aries and you get a reset real quick. You're going to realize over the next two weeks how supremely powerful you are for real. And it's going to catch a lot of you off guard, but the more, you, okay, Apadai said, Mike, I realized my aura yesterday and started to form letters and shit. I say verbatim of what he said. And it's crazy because yesterday I did something similar. I was even watching the Hunter X Hunter episode where Gon and Hilawa uh, had that baptism from Wingsan and, and opened up their aura and their, and their nodes. So even my energy, I started to be like, oh, wow, there's more functions to this. Everyone's going to get that little like chronicle moment without having to go to some deep pit and pick up a rock. Although we will be using this labradorite crystal ball, all right, for the world healing. Regardless, um, don't necessarily be deterred by Nicole Razy says the build of people coming to me for knowledge and understanding has tripled, you know, and you have been doing this soul work. I know because you're here watching. There's a lot of people who mean well. I, I know I frequently talk about, you know, these dark forces, these fakes, because they're around in abundance. But you have to remember, my friends, before we move into Leo season, our true enemy is not our fellow flesh and blood, okay? You should have compassion in your heart for your fellow human, no matter who they are, because our true enemy are the evil spirits and principalities in high places. We're talking about as high as 50 kilometers up over every city that's able to control and manipulate. And, and then, hold on, this is what's happening. Fight against other principalities who are like, I want this space, spiritual gangster style. Some of you are becoming spiritual gangsters and you're starting to reclaim your territory. And you're starting to reclaim Cancers know exactly what I'm talking about. You're starting to reclaim the emotional, vibrational territory that you express and, 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 and live in. So that some of you are walking down your neighborhoods, blasting it with positive healing energy because you're like, oh, hell no. These freaking aliens and dark spirits are trying to layer this with negative energy. And some of you can see how it's affecting people, all right? Not everyone is like me, like you're just focused on one thing. Some people, they like, they can see how things connect. Yep, that's an Ephesians verse for sure. So it's all, it's getting realer. Like I told you two weeks ago, spiritual warfare has popped off even further to where before the warfare was all in your mind and how you, how you allow symbolisms to change how you feel about yourself. Now it's direct. Now people are coming up to you like, hey, I got you this drink. And then your, your intuition is like, don't drink that, don't drink that, don't drink that. But you might just be like, well, they're nice. I don't know why I'd feel bad if I said no. And your ass gets cut. It's for real, my friends. Some of you wake outside with cracked eggs on your door because someone did a spell outside your door. You have to clap back. This is no kumbaya. Some of you have higher entities who rock with you. So they purposely tell you, don't worry. Anything spiritual that comes to you, I got you. Don't even trip. You do your thing. Not everyone has contracts like that. So make sure you take it that seriously. You don't even necessarily have to be super paranoid, but you need to trust when you feel it's on and get it popping. Because what this is preparing us these last two weeks, last two weeks, these are the last two weeks before the most explosive and exciting period of our lives since like I would say Jupiter was a Leo. 
And Jupiter and Leo isn't exciting for a lot of people, but this is going to revisit a whole lot of that. So regardless, um, the moon's going to be transiting Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, and Gemini before it slips into Cancer. And then at the very beginning of Leo, we have this new moon. So what this means, because the sun, our general collective conscious awareness is touring Cancer, what our souls are going to key us into collectively is that there is an incredible shift occurring right now over how well we bridge the sincerity in our hearts because of this Leo energy with now the outer world and with how we let this reflect in our symbolic actions, our literal actions, and the things that we choose to believe. Because once this slips into Pisces and starts to conjunct Neptune, it is literally going to turn into an episode of Stranger Things. And all the stuff you expected a paranormal, psychic reality life to be, you're, you're gonna realize it's not like that at all. You're gonna realize they're a lot more on point. You're gonna realize they have a lot of experience. So when I say they, I mean people who are versed in the dark arts. I mean people who are versed in sorcery. I mean full grown witches, or dudes call them a bitch, but then she's writing their name down on a paper before she throws that paper in a ditch, and now their life's messed up and their luck just switches. Right? that they're out here. And just like they're out here, you have paladins out here. You have light workers out here trying to purify zones of space, organize meditation circles because they're about about it. And the spiritual warfare has never ended. It's been around since your parents. It's been around since before your parents. And once the moon shifts out of Pisces into Aries, and you really now have to face that quarter square in your spirit and soul regarding how you're going to identify with all this emotional psychic energy that you're feeling, it's gonna be a stupid reel. <sighs> Got a little bit too passionate and ambitious there. Um, the, once again, I, want, I just wanna revisit how your general awareness of this energy for this full moon in Capricorn transit is bringing in the entire transformation. You're starting to break free from addictions. You're starting to break free or fall even deeper to, some of you are breaking free by falling even deeper to obsessions. So first thing I'd like to say is if, if you're trying to break free from an addiction or an obsession, you have to stop attaching to it. And I'm not saying that you have to stop being addicted to what you're doing. I'm saying you have to stop attaching to the need to control whether you can get off the addiction or not. This is very unorthodox. When you think about the eighth and the 12th house, addictions and obsessions are a really intense intention to connect with the divine or something on a deep soul level and of course i'm not telling you anything you don't already know you know someone said got got rid of snap for a bit for me it's facebook all social media and a, a lot of other stuff willingly on purpose but you know what i'm saying like this is this is very critical because some of you can go cold turkey Others of you have to literally surrender to it. And that's difficult to, it's so counterintuitive. Like you would think you would have to try and stop and wean it off. But some of you, you literally have to surrender to your addiction, surrender to your obsession in order for you to release it. In order for you, this is, this is what this woman is forcing some of you to do. I'm not really saying this as advice. I'm trying to really reason for why some of you are trying so hard to release addictions or things that are very obsessive. Like, logically, you even know it's irrational, but that's the whole, that, that's how emotions work. There, I mean, there's nothing rational about emotions. So you're trying to control it with the influence of Capricorn. And in order to purge it for real, you need to surrender to the deaths. 
so that as you generate that energy by being fully in it, okay, it's now brought up and it can be purged. This is not gonna be really easy transit. When this squares Uranus, as the moon is doing so right now, that's why it's funky. That's why it's nothing that is socially acceptable um, or could re or what could be socially acceptable because Jupiter is obviously Libra, willing to understand. But you really want to be in a mindful position to surrender when needed, because in this surrender is where you're going to find your power. For those of you looking for it, not everyone has to find their power. Some people are watching this with their power. So regardless, another thing that I want to let you know about this transit that we're experiencing profoundly has much to do with the energy that goes very well into how the Saturn transit in Sagittarius is influencing Venus in Gemini. Venus is going to slowly King Kong's Mercury at an even greater level while we're getting ready for this extravagant Leo transit. So we're having to very profoundly dive even deeper in a more passionate way with how we feel. Now, the best part about all this, once again, is we did the hard work when the moon was in Virgo. We generated this energy, all right, as well as we can, could. And now, all the rest is going to happen for you. Your mission, should you choose to accept, is to not only get out of your way, but get out of spirit's way, okay? You're going to be put in situations where you feel like you need to harness more of this power. Some of you are going to feel like you need to flare up a massive amounts of chakra for a Dragon, Dragon Ball Z style, and the lesson is going to learn you're already there. See, when you, when you watch these things in animes or in, in real shows, they have to show you the process. They, they have to sacrifice the real life implications, right? But they also have to exaggerate a whole lot of it so that you can see it, especially when it comes to flaring up one's aura and chakra and Mystic Gohan status, just like Chad Taylor. A lot of you are going Mystic Gohan. And I have to say the story of Mystic Gohan because that's profound. But regardless, some of you, you, when you see these people flare their aura, if you notice, no one else really sees it. Like it, The reason why we see the aura is because we have to see a reference point as a viewer, so they're going to color it in. But most people can't see auric colors. Most people have cloaks. So some of you are flaring your aura, but you're waiting to see it. And it's like you, cancer is teaching you to feel it and really know when you've built your energy up and tempered your will. So I really like that story of Mystic Gohan. Gohan um, got his ass whooped by Boo. Whooped. This was after he, you know, started to be more in his studies, after his dad died saving the world. And, you know, he didn't really train as much. So naturally, the hope of the world just got his ass whooped. But before he died, he got transported to another dimension by a god. And then that God took him to a Supreme God. And that Supreme God, lecherous as he was, but also kind of funny, was like, all right, just sit down here and I'll just like meditate with you. Meanwhile, this young man is seeing this same dude who whipped his ass grow even stronger and killing people. And he's like, I can't wait. I can't wait for this. Like, we need to hurry. And then later on, after that long meditation, you know what I'm saying? Um, the supreme god was like oh yeah you're already done and then he's like what do you mean i'm already done what did we even do and then he's so was just you know just like he explained he sat down and took he took his true potential out of him so and really keep this in mind because this is everything that's happened these first two weeks for you this is this is this is your mystic goal moment. the thing that almost blocked miss he almost went his own way this is the point of the story mystic gohan or Gohan, you know what I'm saying? He didn't go through any grueling training montage. He didn't have to do any extensive training. So the Supreme God was like, just flare up your energy. And he's like, what do you mean? 
he thought that his time was wasted. Some of you are in situations where I think you're expecting the world to fall apart. You're expecting yourself to have to go through something grueling before you accept you've had any real spiritual development. And <laughs> the universe is just like, why don't you put yourself to the test? Why don't you do it? You know what I mean? Show yourself what you can do that you didn't even know. A lot of you have on the clean gotten some fierce upgrades and your luck has tripled and you may not even know because it's you not know, happened through conflict, which kind of pushes you to see it. So, you know, Mystic Gohan started charging up and realized, holy crap, I have so much more power than I even realized. But he almost let his mind make him think that he didn't have that, you know, because this is something that you can't really sense. This is what the eye can't see, the ear can't hear. This is a deeper part of you. And the pure of heart are able to access this because this is the same energy where if someone with bad intent controls this, they can make this a world of fear and pain and control and manipulation, kind of like what's happening now. So regardless, <sighs> um, <laughs> regardless, this is a very pivotal time. The message that I want to leave for you here is plain and simple. You've done a lot of hard work as this King Kong's Titans. The truth that you speak must align very potently with the integrity of your beliefs so that everything you see aligns with what your heart speaks as truth so that you're, you're not necessarily around people or yourself saying things that do not reflect your real life. As long as you do that, you're Gucci. I really want you to think back to the last new two weeks of this new moon where you really had to stand up for how you feel and you really had to like define, even if it was by yourself, you really had to define how you feel about certain core things. The rest of this two weeks up until the next new moon, eclipse, chill. That's it. Like, still do what you have to do, but now and allow yourself to build up this energy. Okay. Uh, we must have a powerful Scorpio in the room or somebody, because I'm feeling fine. I'm feeling some amazing power. And this is the type of power that's Piscean or Scorpionic. I think we have someone in the chat who's sharing their power with others. And this is very great timing because we're about to go into the healing portion. Um, let this full moon in Capricorn remind you how powerful not only you are, but also how powerful we are when we stick together. Um, once this shifts out of Aries and on the 15th, and the following week starts to have that final balsamic phase, you're gonna find that the seeds you sow and what you build and generate uh, naturally while also not generating anything, it's just kind of subgenerating, will key you in profoundly to what you can do with this power. So in a nutshell, this week from the 9th to the 15th, is you coming to the profound realization that you have evolved the level of how well you can harness and control your aura and your power, your own psychic power. From the 15th to the 24th is now when you start to decide what are you gonna do with it and how does this make you you? This is where some of you are gonna be like, I wanna use this power to be a vigilante and kick criminals' asses that police can't. Or some of you will be like, I'm gonna use this power to dupe the police and to break the law. Or the more common answer, what most people are gonna do, is both. They're gonna do a little bit of both. They're gonna do the light and the dark. So it gets fucking real, because then we're gonna move into Leo, and this Leo eclipse is now where the universe sorts you out, like, okay, this is where you're meant to use your power. This is what this is for your adventure. Regardless, my friends, um, let us now get ready 
for the healing portion. The healing portion of this webinar is going to have a lot profoundly to do with clearing, because the first two weeks was really preemptive so that the darker spirits that open up in people's hearts won't get too much to them. This one is also preemptive, but we're going to harness the power of Pluto and go deep. What I'm trying to say is what this healing is going to do, and I mean, we only have a little less than 50. That's way more than enough. We have over 24. So we have like, we have a lot of power packed. Okay, so regardless, um, August is going to be the shit, like Apollodati said. And as we gather our energy, you know what I'm saying? If you have any sage, you can totally light it up. If you have anything you want to incorporate in this, start, start getting settled in your spirit. Thank you all very much, by the way, for joining me in this. Because the first thing to understand is that all these webinars are cumulative. And the cumulative nature of these webinars allow you at profound length to build up this energy together as a collective and as a community. So always continue to show gratitude for yourself and other people because we're doing, we're doing the soul work right now. We're gaining an understanding of what this is and then we're projecting energy. So shout out to those of you with your crystals. I'm going to get out these crystals right here. And uh, Mike, what do you think about having two Leo new moons this year? If that doesn't tell you that the universe is magic, I don't know what will, because we have to have two Leo moon, new moons. This is like two releases. This is like two, this is like when you're kids and <coughs> they just release, imagine they just release like Pokemon and Digimon at the same time, which they kind of did. Well, they didn't, but yeah. That's a horrible analogy, but it's, it's just, it's, it's huge. It's huge. Um, you're going to really feel the energy that I can say. So, okay. 